we need to do is insert our panel and I glued along the edge real carefully. I don't want to get a lot of spillover inside. And then I drop the panel in. And then we're just going to attach it with these little brads. One of the marvelous things about the Mark V is its ability to make genuine raised panel doors like this one. Look at this beautiful decorative edge here that's cut on the rail and styles with a special cutter set up here in the shaper. And also this raised panel which we cut on the table saw. Three setups and you can make a raised panel door like this. Let's show you how it's done. I've already cut my uh, rail here and you can see how the cutter works on that. We've got the reciprocal cutter set up in the shaper now and I'm going to cut the style. That's all there is to it. And you can see the two parts fit perfectly like there. And we have our groove here for the raised panel to slip into. Beautiful raised panel doors on the Mark V. I told you it was a three-step process. You saw me do the first two on the shaper. I'm going to do the third step here on the table saw. But before I make this cut, I want to show you how I've set the table saw up. First, I've tilted the table at about a 15-degree angle. And I've got my rip fence in set pretty close with this high fence on it. That's to support this panel as I pass it through the blade. Something else you'll notice, the guard has been removed. Of course, with this special fence on, the guard wouldn't fit. So we had to take that off. That means extra caution because we have an exposed blade. I've also put a special table insert here. It has a very narrow slot in it because I'm going to be cutting off a very small piece of scrap. With the regular table insert, it might slip down there, get caught, and come back at me, and I don't want that to happen. The other thing I've done, this is a little trick I learned, in cutting hardwood in this setup, slow the saw down to the disc sander speed rather than the normal uh, saw speed. It'll avoid burning, uh, leaving any burn marks here. So now we're all set up to go. And watch how easy this is. After you've completely assembled your raised panel door, there's a couple of other cuts you might want to put on it. When you've completely assembled it, please remember this does not get glued in place. It stays in there loose so it can expand due to humidity. The other cut you might want to put is a round over here and a rabbit in the back. And the Mark V makes that very easy. We do the round over cut here on the shaper. Let me show you how that works. It's a real pleasure to cut rabbits on the Mark V. And if we wanted to do one on the back of our door here, which we do, that would be a little cut right in there like that. That would recess our door panel right on the face frame, and that's a good thing to do. Let me show you how easy it is here. We simply drop this table an eighth of an inch. We're going to make three passes to cut our three-eighths rabbit. And we've got this dropped an eighth of an inch right now. And the fence is set just right. That's all there is to it. There it is, a beautiful raised panel door on your Mark V. You can make these for every room in the house. Fits right into the rail and style you just saw me cut a minute ago. Now, there are a lot of different ways you can approach finishing, but it's best to do your finishing before you hang your doors and do your false front. And before you put any finish on, you have to make sure that the entire project is smooth as glass, and you do that with sandpaper, and then you clean up, first with a vacuum cleaner, and then a tack rag, which is this piece of gauze, it's been impregnated with some sort of wax that picks up every last speck of sawdust. As for the finish we're using, we're first putting on a stain to match the countertop that we're using. Then after that, we're applying a layer of polyurethane finish because it's great for moisture conditions. And after that polyurethane is completely dry, we make sure all these little places where we've set the nails are filled with a filler, and then another coat of polyurethane goes on. 
Hanging doors is great fun because our cabinet really starts to come together. But it does require a little bit of patience, so bear with me. First of all, the cabinet would be on its back to make it easier for you to do. But I've got it turned up so you can see it well. And you can see these hinges that we're using provide a little bit of spring snap so we get a nice return on the door. The first door is in place. Let me show you how we're doing the second door. We're going to use, remember we had the offset cut here for our rabbit. We've got the hinges that match that. And all our screwing is going to be done with this variable speed drill, which really makes it easy to put those screws in. The second door goes right in place, and we drill a couple of holes for screws. We're only going to put one screw in each hinge. That's so if we have to make some slight adjustments here to get the two doors lined up perfectly and a nice spacing here in the center, we're not going to have any problem. And if we do have to move a door slightly, we can remove it. We've only got one hole drill. We can re-drill for our hinges, no problem. Also, slight adjustments can be made with a rubber mallet on these hinges. It'll move the door just a little bit. Having got our doors hung, we're ready to put on our false front. When you're attaching your face frame, you don't want to use glue because you want to allow for expansion and contraction. So what we've done is we've taken a couple pieces of scrap, we screwed it to the back of the false front, and then we turn them like this so that they span the back of the face frame. We get a nice tight attachment. And you can see how nice it looks now that everything is all put together. Now, if you're building a cabinet that's much larger, you may want to build drawers. The cabinet that we're making has no drawers in it, but we did want to give you some idea about how drawers are made and what decisions you have to make before you start making your drawers. So we thought we'd look at this one that does have some drawers in it. First of all, as you can see, we have mechanical slides and they work very nicely. And I recommend to you, if you're going to use drawers, put in mechanical slides like these. And they look a little complicated when you get them at the store, but they're really very, very simple. The mechanical slide is lined up with the front of the face frame here and goes straight back. That's the part that goes on the uh, cabinet itself. The part that goes on the drawer, you sort of do the same thing. You just line up the bottom of the uh, slide part with the bottom of the drawer. It goes straight across, lines up with the front of the drawer box, and that's all there is to it. That's a very simple application. The, if you make the decision to use this sort of slide, the next decision you have to make is how to build the box for the drawer. And because these take up a half an inch on each side, that means your drawer box has to be a full inch narrower than the opening in your face frame and a little bit shorter than the opening in the face frame. Other than that, you're all set to start building the drawer box itself. Okay, let's take a look at how we're going to cut out our drawer parts for the box itself. We've very carefully measured so we know what the length of the parts should be, and we've selected a dado and rabbit joint, which is a really nice one to make because it's easy and it's very, very strong. This drawer will stay together for years. You can see what we've done here. There's a simple dado on the sides, a rabbit on the front and the back, and it goes together very simply. We've also cut this groove along the sides and the front to take the bottom. We're putting this together upside down for a reason that you'll, will be apparent in just a second. The last thing we do before we make the final assembly is make sure that our width is correct and will fit in the opening in the face frame. Then we're ready to go. We glue it, put a few brads in, take our bottom and slide it. You can see why I cut the bottom, the back uh, shorter than the rest of the parts. This just slides right in that groove and squares up the box for a nice solid fit. Once you finish with the construction of your unit, you're ready to look at installation. Now we're not actually going to install the unit right now, but I wanted to cover a few important points. You would bring your unit into the space you're installing it and then plumb it and level it from all different sides. And you may want to use some shims to help you in that effort. Then you'll come back and you'll find the studs behind your wall, which are positioned 16 inches 